Right. So uh, today I'm going to explain about few points to you, uh, uh, Karthik, because anyway, as you have some awareness over the script runner part earlier. So let me explain you what exactly uh, Groovy scripting is all about and why Groovy scripting is being used. At the same time, you must be knowing about what are the different, different scripts are available. Either it can be the Perl scripting at the same time, Java scripting, right? So because there are different, different scripting languages, whenever we are working on the projects, normally we use. So okay. one should know about how different Groovy scripting with other scripting languages. Because Groovy scripting exclusively we are using nowadays in the field of Jira, as we all know. Whenever we are yes. working on the Jira administration part and all this to configure the projects, to run the scripts and all to identify the results. Normally Groovy scripting is what something we are using. So before you are getting into that, first of all, you need to have a complete understanding about how different uh, Jira scripting, or Groovy scripting or at the same time Java scripts or Perl scripts and all everything are different. At the same time, when there where there is uh, what is the use of Groovy scripting and where usually we use it. Now, if you try to understand the scripting when context to the Groovy itself is concerned, normally this is something which is normally used for us to uh, simplify the kind of code, whatever are we going to use in the application development, because whatever the kind of code we normally work in the application development may have different languages because sometimes we may be using yeah. Java as a programming language. Some using, especially when we are working on the web applications, client server applications and all, we use Java. At the same time, when we are working on the uh, data analysis related projects and all, most of the times we will be using uh, Python as a programming language. Okay, so authorization of code and as well as authorizing the code is something which is important for us when we are going to uh, work on scripting part, which is essentially required because most of the projects now and then we are moving towards the cloud environment. Cloud environment means either it can be uh, any cloud services, either it can be Azure or it can be AWS, etc. So cloud services we are moving. At the same time, prominency of moving towards uh, agile management is also required because nowadays, most of the projects, we are moving towards the agile directory side. So when we are implementing agile process or agile application, agile implementation in the field of application development, irrespective of the kind of role we are planning on, either we may be a product owner, we may be a scrum master or anyone, it's always important for us to depend on different, different tools. For example, Jira is one of the prominent tools which we are using for a very long time. So Jira is something which is essentially important for us to track the progress of the work, etc. Anyway, you are well versed with. Like this, we have other tools, something like Azure DevOps. Uh, Azure DevOps majorly we use when we want to uh, perform any DevOps operations because if you want to create any kind of data pipelines and if you want to integrate with any of the DevOps tools and all for Jenkins, Kubernetes, Sansible, Negoids. So for all that purposes, generally DevOps tools can be integrated with. Depends on the kind of tool what we have taken, how this can be integrated may vary. For example, when we are working on the Jenkins application as an integration part, it's always important for us to understand how this integration taken place for one and more applications. At the same time, when we are working on the Kubernetes, because Kubernetes is also one of the uh, DevOps environment, DevOps tool, which normally we use it, because these are all something which we can be integrated as an admin point of view I'm talking about, not in context to the Groovy, do remember this. So okay. Kubernetes, normally we use uh, majorly to deploy multiple applications on the single platform by creating some virtual machines, etc. So that whatever the uh, configuration uh, uh, challenges or else if you want to manage any kind of physical systems for the multiple applications and all, this is all something which can be come down. So that Azure DevOps, 
rally right so these are the different different uh, project management tools we use now when it comes to the groovy part itself is concerned this is majorly useful for the developer perspective first of all you need to understand uh, the usage of groovy from two different angles i think yesterday when we discussed with you i think you might have uh, you might have mentioned some point if i am not wrong that i am moving towards the developer role so whenever i am moving towards developer uh, most of the organizations were asking me to learn groovy right that's what you yes said. yes sir yes sir yeah. great because there is so hence you need to understand two different things uh, uh, kartik one is about the admin role second is a developer role because most of the people have some misconception due to the ignorance so because administration majorly you will be focusing on the configurations part authentications authorizations at the same time providing some auth permissions so for uh, for authentication purpose this is what something which normally you use it but whereas from the developer perspective for example whenever developer wants to develop any kind of applications and all in terms of the quality deliverables what they wants to deliver effectively there is a scripting which is required so web applications and all we are using as a java developer when we are working on the web applications and all that's a different story anyway we use different different uh, web applications uh, you we use different different web applications for even for java either you can use uh, core java programming language or you can go for servlets jsp or you can go for enterprise applications normally quality of deliverable of the deployment of the code which is essentially required so the major advantage under groovy is that therein it enhances the productivity of uh, the work which was done by the developers effectively because of the scripting so because most of the errors whatever were identified most, most of the errors whatever was designated detected right so detected and all everything can be reduced for the developer perspective so that it improves the productivity that is one advantage we are going for scripting so i'm talking about groovy scripting now okay because next i'll explain you how different groovy scripting with java scripting and python um, and perl scripting because there are three major prominent scriptings we use one is groovy scripting this is what something we are learning so but if you want to learn groovy scripting it's always important for us to learn about know about learn about means you want to know about java scripting and perl scripting also because perl scripting is the old in uh, old in scripting language we are using for very long time we used for so perl scripting not nowadays but java scripting even till now we are using java java scripting because whatever the full stack development for java related stuff when we are working nowadays we are working on the java applications either for front end we may be using some html java scripts or java scripts we are using at the same time angular js this is all something we are using for the front end development in regard to that the advantage especially uh, groovy scripting and all groovy scripting supports majorly with the existing classes of, a, of the java and as well as the libraries whatever are we using in the application development because if you want to write a program or if you want to write a code for the java there are different different classes libraries libraries instances and all everything is what something it is required so my suggestion would be if you have an idea it's okay fine but i would suggest you because as in when you are moving toward developer role it's always better for you to know about the programming language for sure because that is important for you kartik okay programming okay. languages okay. because if you want to know about java scripting or if you want to know about the integration towards the groovy scripting and all it's always advisable for you to have some programming language i'm saying basic okay i'm not saying you okay. you need to have some hands on experience and all because the major i mean the major responsibility when we are working on groovy scripting is that we have to integrate this with existing java classes and libraries because in okay. the beginning of the session if you remember i told you do you have any experience in working on ides right intellij id yes sir, sir. Studio, yeah right so eclipse ids these are the ids which normally we use to write 
or to execute the code either it can be a uh, it can be a java code or it can be c c plus plus or it can be a python code kotlin right so there are swift swift languages there nowadays there are a lot of programming languages for coming into picture now to execute these programming languages and all there are some ides which normally we use one is prominency of ides one is intellij id second is eclipse is one of the id we are using at the same time visual studio code as in when you have stated that you are using in your organization as it right so it's always better to have an idea over understanding about the classes and libraries in java from the context of java i'm saying uh, karthik because not relating to python or something because even now even java has a prominency wherever you go we have more requirement for java and all so i would suggest you to have a basic understanding over the java programming if you have otherwise if you want me to provide some basics of java basics and all i'll provide it to you or as if sure. you want to learn on your own you can learn but because before you want to go for scripting and all it's always better for us to learn about the uh, java classes and libraries and all because we have to exist we have to in integrate with the java existing libraries because IntelliJ okay. ID understanding is required for that but because whenever we are working on the script runner Normally, enabling script runner can also be done using IntelliJ ID. So whenever we are using script runner and whenever we are en enabling using IntelliJ ID, whatever the existing Java code which was already existed there, so that can be used extensively. Understood okay. clear, right? Yes, yes. Sir. So for that reason, IntelliJ ID knowledge is required. So learning the basics of uh, Java or the programming language, I can say about the classes, libraries, instances etc is important for you second because if you know it so that you will be knowing when it is any when there is any integrations taken place so that you can understand it much better that's the reason why you are doing all that that is point number one point number two one more advantage when it comes to the id's point of view is concerned there are multiple coding uh, multiple uh, programming languages can be executed in that particular id Either it can be data analysis related, either it Python or something like. So integrating with existing Java class libraries and all, so that effectiveness of productivity in context to the developer execution of the project can be done. So for that reason, generally Groovy is being used. This is point number two. Okay. Point number three, majorly scripts are and all everything will be used for us to build the scripts and all everything to process the applications because if you want to process any kind of applications or not so any process execution in terms of the code what we have generated so far so if you want to work on that it's always important for us to know about the groovy part so groovy advantage was that especially when we are working on because Java scripting and all everything will be used for the front end development. Because if you want to create any kind of user interfaces, majorly to save it, oh. okay, not only for that, but majorly when we are working on the front end development and all, Java scripts and all everything are being used extensively in that regard. But okay. whereas when it comes to the Groovy, it is different. Even because Groovy scripting majorly used especially for the java programming part because when we are there is any kind of uh, process deployment of a particular code or an application we want to deploy within the existing ide or the application itself is concerned we have to make some changes in it right this is the reason why it's always important for us to learn about the groovy scripting this is point number two Next, okay. why Groovy is required? So, why Groovy is required? Because of one reason. Because here I have already mentioned you. You don't need to define a class to be able to run the code. Because if you want to run any code for the project and all, there are some classes and instances you have to use. If you remember, whenever we want to visualize this, if you remember, if you have an idea uh, about UML diagrams, do you have any idea of that sort? UML. Um, no, sir, I don't have. Okay. So normally, uh, do you have any idea over the class diagram? Class diagram. Uh, yes, sir. A uh, little bit experience with that. Okay. So uh, class diagrams are the one which majorly used for us to explain you what are the classes and instances we are using for a particular code. Okay. okay. 
So major advantage, especially when we are working on the groovy is that when we are working on the groovy, the major advantage is that we need to define the classes. Wherein if you want to run any kind of code or something like defining the classes and all everything are possible. This is yeah. why generally groovy scripting is something which normally we are using and all. And one more important point, especially if you are working as a Jira administrator in future, or else if you wants to work as a programmer or someone, this is important, right? So for this, this is one of the core and an important element why nowadays we are working on the groovy part. One of the important element is this, because whatever yes. the automation of the workflows extensions, if you want to create, because due to the business complexity, it is increasing. As long as complexity of the work increasing, automatically you need to enhance your workflows also. So whenever you are en enhancing your workflows, it's always important for us to update the conditions, whatever the required conditions and all everything we have to update. At the same time, you need to update the post conditions, et cetera, in the existing workflows because workflows are predefined uh, templates which are already available on Jira. Anyway, being a Jira admin, you know it. Yes, sir. But enhancing of the workflow to increase the business activity or the complex activity, if complexity is something required. So if you want to automate the workflow extensions and all everything, for that reason, generally Groovy scripting is something which normally we use it. Understood? Clear? Yes, yes, sir, yes sir. Right? So for this reason, so Groovy scripting, why are we using? Because of this reason. The first one is, this is majorly used for us to have a possibility where we can integrate with existing Java classes and libraries where it is being used. At the same time, it also automates the workflow extensions and all. At the same time, we don't require to define any kind of classes and all if you want to run any kind of code. So without running code, what we can do simply using the scripting and all without even classes also, if you want to run the code and all everything is what something possible. In this regard, Groovy scripting is what something which normally are we using. Now, second point, because yesterday I told you, right? So wherein we need to start from the basics of scripting and as scripting languages. This is what something which we are need to require to learn. Normally, first thing being a new learner, anyone, before they are getting into Groovy scripting, it's always important for them to learn why scripting is required. So why scripting or scripting languages are required is what something we need to know. So before you are getting into the scripting languages, first of all, you need to understand what are the different languages we have. So the languages are as follows. Languages are as follows. The first languages are called markup languages. First languages are called markup languages. Same. Second languages are called scripting languages. Third languages, uh, second languages is called modeling language. Third language is called scripting language. Fourth language is called programming language. Programming language. And fifth language is called query language. Understood, Karthik, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So five languages we have. In the field of IT, we have five languages. One is markup languages. Markup, sorry. Yeah, markup languages. Second is called modeling language. Third one is called scripting language. Fourth one is called programming language. Fifth is the one is what we call it as query language. So these are the three different languages which normally we use whenever we are working on the application development. Means if you want to work on any application development, it's always important for you to use these languages these language. language for sure. Sorry. Yes, Karthik? No, sir. I'm, I did not say anything, sir. Okay, right. So, these are the different, different languages. Okay. So, the first one about markup language. Markup languages are nothing but the example for you to provide is HTML, DHTML, all that. 
means html stands for hypertext markup language yeah. so hypertext markup language html full form of html in this hypertext markup language normally this is these are all the one which will be used to create some user interfaces because if you want to create any kind of front pages like login pages or something login like page, yeah, yes, yes. if you remember when you see the url part you can see there in an extension called dot html dot php yeah. something yes, sort, right yes, so sir. markup languages are used to write any html document you can see in the real world whenever we are using any application in the right hand side when you can go to the help you can see the html code over there whatever the html code was written and all if you want to make any kind of changes on the existing html that can be done making some modifications on the html tool so that even front page designs and all everything can be changed so for that reason generally markup languages are being used this is point number one point number two modeling languages these will be used to visualize these will be used to visualize the processes etc for example use case diagram sequence diagram okay class diagram object diagram uh next component diagram next deployment diagram activity diagram okay next collaboration diagram okay. right so different different diagrams are being used under the modeling part so to do this modeling language normally this is where generally we call it as uml diagram stands for these are all we call it as UML diagrams. So for that, there are different different tools we use. Something like Star UML. At the same time, Microsoft Visual, right? At the same time, Lucid Charts. So these are the different different tools which normally we use to create some modeling language tools and all. So for that reason, generally this modeling language is what something will be used here. This is point number two. Point number three, when you are talking about the scripting language. Scripting language and means that whenever we want to create any communication among the programming languages or whenever you want to integrate with any kind of communication for any of the programming languages and all, generally the scripting language is what something which normally it is being used here. So scripting language is what something which normally we want to create a language wherein whatever the kind of instructions you are going to provide and what are the kind of instructions you are providing and all everything in the application. For that reason, generally scripting languages are something which normally we want to use. Understood clear? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm understood. Next is about scripting language. The next language is called programming language. Right? So, next language is called programming language. Means to write the business logic for any application, for any project. Okay? If you want to write a business logic for any project uh, which contains the functionalities which which contains the functionalities this is where generally programming language come into picture so example you can see like java Okay, C++, C, C++, at the same time, Python. Hello. Next, Kotlin, right, so etc. These are all the different, different programming languages. If you want to write a business logic for any project, let's say, for example, one plus two, you have given on the screen where you are getting a result called three. Have you got this? 
there is some programming language which was written in a kind of business logic. To add to to add two different numbers is what something being a programmer you did. This is where generally programming languages are used. So if you are being a developer, this is where something which you have to be known with. This is what yes, this is what sometime back which I have told you. This is where generally this developer write this programming languages, etc., and all everything in regular intervals. This is something which we call it as programming language. Next, after that, we call it as query language. You know about query language well, I think, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So query languages are the one. Deal, these will be used to extract any data from the database. We require to write queries, right? This is where generally these queries we call it a SQL. SQL is a structured query language where we are going to write queries and all. Either it can be for data manipulation purpose or else it can be for data controlling purpose or else it can be uh, relating to the translation purpose and all that, right? Means if you want to edit or if you want to delete, update, select, right? So whatever yeah. the piece of uh, data which is available on SQL and all, if you want to identify that, for that purpose, generally SQL is what yeah. something which normally we use. So these are the different, different program. These are the different, different languages which normally we use. So one is about the... Uh, markup languages which are used for the creating some user interfaces etc at the same time modeling languages which are used to visualize the process like creating some class diagrams object diagrams etc yeah. all this this is required for that next programming languages are used to create some business logic for any of the project at the same time scripting languages and all wherein if you want to create any kind of integration or a communication with any of the other programming languages or something like. So for that reason, general scripting language is being used. Programming language is used to create any kind of business logics if you want to implement. Programming language is being used. At the same time, query languages are the one which will be majorly used to extract the queries from the database. Means if you want to extract any information from the database and all, query languages are being used. So these are the different, different languages which normally we have to use it. Okay. Understood? Clear? Karthik? Yes, sir. Understood. Yes, sir. Understood. So these are the basic understanding over the scripting languages, all that stuff, right? So whatever I've discussed today, right? So because this is a high level understanding which I have given today. So why Groovy is being used? For what purpose it is being used? Where it is being used? And how different... Groovy scripting, when we're trying to understand about the scripting languages and all that. So what are the differences you can see among the uh, differences among the uh, uh, markup languages or modeling or programming languages, all that. So this is all something which we have learned. Next thing okay. we need to know about how different Groovy scripting when you are comparing with Java scripting and Perl scripting. So how Perl scripting looks like how JavaScripting looks like, and at the same time, how Groovy scripting. So how the different, what differences you can see among these three scripting languages is what something you need to know that will explain you tomorrow. Okay, clear? Sure, sir. Great. So today I've just given you an introduction part. If you have any questions, please go ahead now. Uh, no, sir, I don't have any questions. Uh, no. Clear? Yeah, I'm clear, sir. Okay, right. So we'll meet tomorrow and they discuss the first difference between two things. Okay, the difference between uh, programming language, difference between Groovy, uh, difference between uh, Groovy, JavaScripting, and Perl scripting. Then we'll get into the script part.